Friday night. It is finally Friday night. You know, uh, this seemed like such a long, long week. Um, <laughs> you know, when you're sore, the time goes slower. Oh, man. Don't you, don't you think? Oh, for sure. I think that, yeah, that's a, that's a good way of looking at it. Everything just sort of slows down the body, everything, just the way you're thinking. But boy, I tell you, I know even mentally, my mental clarity this week has not been very good. Uh, and and I do admit to being a little on edge at the beginning of the week. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's interesting. I ended up staying an extra day in St. George. Did you? Mostly, mostly because I messed up <laughs> the uh, accommodation. When I, I, you know, I originally qualified a long time ago. Yeah. And so as soon as I qualify, I book. And I was like, well, it's going to be, it's always a Saturday, Sunday race. Women go Saturday, men go Sunday. Yeah. So... You know, I just booked through till Monday, figuring I'll race on Sunday. I don't want to drive home after right. you know, after the race. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, you know, we race we raced on Saturday, so it was good though because we didn't come back till Monday morning, and it okay. was a, I was able to have a little bit more just yeah. kind of chill time. Mm -hmm. uh, although my wife wanted to go hiking, and man, my legs were uh, not too happy uh, hiking. No, did do you know which hike did you do? We just did, uh, there's a trail near Leverkin called the Confluence. Do you know when mm -hmm. we sat out at that coffee shop? Yep. You, it's actually in that gully. Oh, nice. Okay. Right, along the river. And then the next day we went up to Red Hills, mm -hmm. um, which was spectacular. Mm -hmm. um, but I should have known by the name Red Hills. <laughs> yeah. You didn't want anything to do with it. I didn't it. want that anything long. to do with it. Yeah. But, uh, but it was good. But yeah, it's interesting, you know, when, when, when you're sore from a race, your temper is a little bit higher, you're, um, you're just a little bit annoyed, a little bit easier. Yeah. And, um, you know, when you, when you can't get out of the car, <laughs> yeah. but you know, that's, uh, you know, that's the nature of, uh, and there are so uh, many racing. more bad drivers when I'm, uh, edgy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of really course, it's just me being a little too uh, judgmental while I'm driving, but. That's right. No, that's, a, you're exactly, you're exactly right. And, you know, we can talk a little bit about, uh, about the race last weekend. And obviously it was the, both of us have already talked about this and, and agreed that that was one of the craziest uh, races yeah. we've ever been associated with. Right. Um, both from uh, uh, the difficulty of the course, in particular that run course mm -hmm. and the weather. Yeah. Um, you know, I still so let, let's let's recap because maybe not everyone's watched or, right. or stayed up. Yeah, let's it. talk so about it. We did the uh, Ironman 70.3 World Championship up in St. George, Utah. And uh, it was uh, we, we qualified for that at different races. Was this actually one of your qualifiers or did you roll? Did you? Uh, I actually don't even know where I originally <laughs> qualified. Because I think this was actually originally qualified in Augusta in 2019. That might be right. Because then you had an opportunity. You qualified again, but you were able to move one of them to New Zealand, which is now also <laughs> back, back in back in <laughs> St. George. So it's a little confusing. But so we both qualified at different races. Uh, you, I was, qualified, I, you qualified in Hawaii, correct? I qualified in Hawaii. I, I did get a roll down spot, and I did benefit from them adding in more slots because i did not have a great race in hawaii time-wise or position-wise so uh but you know to, to have the opportunity to race in our backyard in saint george uh and do a world championship is so neat uh in fact you know pre the, the week before when i was up there i was just you know loving that people were enjoying uh, other athletes were enjoying going around taking pictures uh of of the course and and uh saint george and you know, here we live in this area and it is so beautiful. So it really is a, a, a pleasure to share that with, with other athletes. Yeah. It's, you know, St. George itself is, it, it's a spectacular area. You know, we started going up there when we were doing, you know, triathlon 10 years ago or so. And, and back then I was like, we should buy a little condo up here. Cause yeah. I, I love it. And yeah. now you can't afford one, but back well, then we could have, Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, um, it is a spectacular place. Yeah. It really, it really is. And, you know, they, they, they were touting at the land of endurance and, you know, yeah. I, I agree. Like what a place to be for endurance sports. Mm -hmm. 
No, fantastic. So it's really interesting going up there that uh, last week, it was hot. And uh, we were yeah, just all, driving up on, on Thursday. It was hot. It was. And we were all talking about how to manage the heat uh, during especially the run, but also even leading up. In fact, when our podcast uh, last week, we were talking about wearing the long sleeves and whether or not that was going to be a good thing or if that was going to uh, hinder uh, performance. So it was we interesting. Were, we were even talking about, remember, uh, what we were going to do standing around before the race at That's eight right. in the morning in the sun, in the in sun, the I was like, oh, are we going to get overheated before we even get in the water? That's right. Well, yeah. yeah. That, that just pretty quickly. Yeah. That is, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen in St. George. <laughs> you know, I don't remember who it was that first said something about, oh, there's a chance of rain, but it would, it happened even after I dropped off my uh, run gear. Uh, so it's a two transition. And so we had to drop our run gear off down in downtown St. George um, and then go drop our bike gear off up at uh, Sand Hollow. And so I remember dropping off all my gear, thinking it's going to be a hot day uh, for a run. So I added, you know, extra uh, water hydration uh, system in there to be able to use that. Obviously never used it. So uh, but then somewhere along the way, someone said, hey, it might be raining on Saturday. I'm like, no way. Well, the weird thing was when we were you know, around four o'clock setting up our bikes, a windstorm came through. Yeah. And you know, in the desert, when the wind comes, that something. usually means something's going to change. Oh, that's right. And uh, so then I was like, well, I look at the weather and say, oh, 40% chance of rain. Well, that means 60% chance of no rain. <laughs> right. Like, and I go with the, I go with the odds. So I'm like, oh, it's, it's not going to rain. We're going to no. be fine. But this is a this is a point to point course, and so you know it may be forty percent chance rain in one area, which is yeah. exactly this is the way it played out. But on the other aspect of the course, the other side of the course, maybe sunny and beautiful. Yeah. So, all right. So we woke up Saturday morning, and it was it was a nice temperature. It was nice. It was probably what mid sixties. Yeah. No wind. The lake had a little chop on it, but yeah. I mean, not nothing that not nothing to really write home about. So, yeah, I was like, "Oh man, this is going to be a good day." Yeah, that's right. It looked like it was. It, we were set up pretty good. So it's really uh, interesting. I was talking to another athlete that you know he bikes about the same as I do, and we're like, "What do you think for a bike split?" I'm like, "Man, if we have a really good day, catch a little bit of a tailwind, maybe two eighteen, maybe two twenty. We're both like, yeah, yeah, that, that's about right. Nope. <laughs> no. well, that's how quickly it changed, right? You know, like it changed from um, basically, you know, being able to do whatever you wanted to, mm -hmm. to, to problem solving yeah. and, um, you know, trying to make the best out of a bad situation. That's right. Uh, no, you're, you're spot on. And, and so what's interesting is you talk with someone who did the race and it really depends on what they had to deal with based upon when they started. Yep. And so the start uh, of athletes took at least three hours to get everybody out, you know, out on the swim. And uh, it, yeah, you talk, you, you talk with people who started the race at, at nine o'clock. They had a very different experience than those who started at eight o'clock. Completely different. No. And, and the funny thing is, is that uh, I was actually trying to look at some like the, the, the weather data Mm -hmm. Some people on their Strava, you know, they have like that updated weather. Yeah. And then I, I watched some of the weather afterwards, like the front that came through. If you got to a certain point on the bike, because the way the wind was coming, you actually got a tailwind. Yeah, right. When others were going against that, literally mm -hmm. going the same direction. Yeah. Right. Going, going towards the west. Some people were getting a tailwind. Some people were getting a headwind. It, it just yeah. mattered what side of that, that, that cell mm -hmm. uh, you were on. Yeah. And, and then. Uh, yeah, and then even amazing. trying to get out of the swim and get out T one, that was a whole nother yeah. challenge there for a lot of athletes. Yeah. So, so yes, uh, you know, depending on where you were, you got different winds. Yeah. You got, and the winds in some areas, some people were clocking fifty to sixty mile an hour gusts. Yeah. Um, you know, I you got hail. I think I yep. got hail. Yeah. Uh, torrential rain at points. Yep. And, you know, then I hit Snow Canyon, I don't know about you, but it, it cleared up and I got a, I got a tailwind going up Snow Canyon. 
Yeah. The one place you don't want a tailwind is when it's starting to get a little warmer. <laughs> yeah, Snow Canyon was fine for me. Yeah. But yeah, and both of us had the uh, the thought that the race directors were going to stop the race. Yes, but when I saw the, the lightning, time, yeah, I, I saw you know I was seeing seeing lightning not too far yeah. in the distance, mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, they're going to have to stop the race. We talked about this last week as well. Yeah. But then, what are they going to do with the people? No, there was nowhere I could take cover where I was. No. So yeah. it was, um, yeah, you were on your own. If you're, if they were stopping the course, if they, I would just be sitting on the curb getting poured on anyhow. So exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, the interesting thing to me was I thought it was pretty much over uh, the rain. And then, you know, you were, I think this is right at the time when we came, yeah. came to the same point in the, in the race course, I think it was about mile nine, 10 on the run and it just started pouring hard again st george I, was not done with us I, I came up behind john and normally i would be able to see john no problem but i you know i had my visor on my head was down because the wind and rain was coming and all of a sudden i hear john hey ted i'm like what <laughs> i had already passed you I, I honestly wasn't even seeing people because it was yeah. just coming down so hard it was amazing yeah it it, it the st george just really chewed us up and spit us out in then the athletes later which tended to be more the females because of the way the start was they had it even all, worse it all cleared up and it was hot and sunny and humid which really yeah. would have been all the water out. just evaporated from the road yeah and where's it gonna go like oh, it, yeah. oh man just you know we were sitting around watching at the end and we're watching uh, some of the females going from their first lap to their second lap. Mm -hmm. And both of us were like, man, we got to find some shade. This is, <laughs> this is uncomfortable standing around watching them. Oh, that was tough. Uh, what a crazy, what a crazy race. And, you know, John, honestly, I don't know how you feel about it, but like, I feel a real sense of accomplishment that we mm -hmm. yeah. were able to finish uh, right. on a day that um, was a kind of epic. You know, this was our epic October in September. Well, there were only just over a hundred DNFs. That blows my mind. Which is really amazing, and and so that's a, a that's credit to a lot of people for putting up with some tough conditions. Now, where you and I were, we got those tough conditions near the end of the bike, or you know, the last third of the bike. And you know, in my mind, I'm like, okay, I just got to get through Snow Canyon, and then I'm on the run, and I'm going to be okay at that point. I can't imagine what people were thinking when they're going out of T1. And being hit with that storm, which moved over us and then moved east and hit them over in T1 later, yep. later on. And so you're starting the bike ride with that type of wind and, and storm. Boy, you know, congratulations to all them for saying, Absol okay, I'm going to absolutely. stick it out. Yeah, um, absolutely. I can't even imagine mm -hmm. getting out of the water and just be like, do I really have three hours in me yeah, to, right. uh, to right. fight this? Is this yeah. what, it, what it's going to be like for a while? And so, yeah, no, that, that's pretty neat that people really, uh, really worked at it and, and got it done. And on top of that, a tough course, especially the run. Well, the, the, the bike course is, is also challenging because there's no flat. Yeah. Right. You're either going up or you're going down. That's right. But that run course they you know i i i always have said that that the the saint george run course to begin with the normal run course is the hardest course yeah well they found a way to make it harder yeah boy i tell you they you you, you head out and that long upgrade from on diagonal that's painful even though it's just a a, a small grade but you're going uphill and then you hit that big steep uphill uh and then it flattens out and then tell what what was the grade on the uh, downhill section? Well, it varied up from between ten and fourteen percent. Mm, that's steep. And 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 that was for you know the half a mile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, it was interesting to I don't know if you end up watching the pro broadcast, but the pros I mean, they were just arms flailing, yeah. slapping their feet yeah. down. Mm -hmm. um you know john we're we're fortunate that we live in an area that is a little bit hilly mm -hmm. we, we could have trained i could have trained more downhill yeah can you imagine if you live in florida oh no there's no opportunity for you to train no. downhill that's right right you can get on a treadmill and go uphill mm -hmm. right but how do you train the downhill oh that downhill and that, and it really was the last mile was really a uh, you know, 10 to 14%, but still a, a steep grade, even going all the way down to the turnaround. 
yep. and then you know ultimately the finish because it was two loops and wet <laughs> on our second loop wet, mm-hmm. wet. It and, was uh, there, was, there were there were there was people that fell uh oh, really? yeah. reports yeah. of people that were they fell on the road because they their feet slid out because no, you no. know we're, we're all wearing racing shoes right they're not mm-hmm. they're not the grippiest uh shoes and then the the paint on the road was uh was very mm-hmm. wet mm-hmm. so yeah it was yeah it was awesome <laughs> so i saw um one of the challenged athletes that had uh two prosthetic limbs <clears throat> and that portion of the hill was so steep he actually went down backwards because the oh, prosthetic yeah. limbs just are not designed to go down that type of steep hill. I didn't see any of the hand cyclists go down the hill, but that would have been uh, treacherous as well. And I heard, um, I read um, one athlete's report. She actually went down zigzag, which I'm like, oh, that was actually a really good idea. Yeah, you go a little bit longer, but boy. I'd be worried someone was going to run me over from behind, though. Because some, people, yeah. some people were going down with reckless abandon, you mm-hmm. know. Um, <laughs> uh someone said something as i was running down and uh like a fan and this kid you know i call him a kid he's probably 25 just comes hammering by me and i look over at them and i'm like must be nice not to care about your legs <laughs> that's right because <laughs> i care about mine all right so now that that's going to get us right into our topic which, yeah uh, downhill running is a great way to do some serious muscle damage yeah and yeah it is a every lot protocol of, every protocol in the, in the in the labs when you when you want yeah. to actually create muscle damage you put them on a downhill running protocol exactly yeah. it's like That's the good. perfect way to cause muscle damage yeah it is so it's you know, it's a lot of contraction of the muscle and you're you're lengthening the muscle of the major muscles uh, of the lower extremity and that lengthening while the muscle is trying to contract that's an eccentric contraction and we know that that causes uh, muscle damage yeah yeah yes and uh so that does yeah that takes us really quickly into our our topic of recovery and you know this is a really hot topic right Mm -hmm. um and and it's been hot for i don't know five years or so now it's been Mm -hmm. you know in the athletic training world you know everyone is looking for the the next best thing to help their athletes recover and there's a lot of ways to look at recovery right is recovery the ability just to train again tomorrow Mm -hmm. or is recovery um, actually rebuilding and and adapting Mm -hmm. and because those are two different things Mm -hmm. and uh, there's even you you can break this down into central versus peripheral so central being like your central nervous system recovery Mm -hmm. peripheral being your muscle uh, Mm -hmm. recovery Um, and then there's also ways to look at it well can i decrease your pain so then you can train again uh, does that actually maybe blunt the training effect? Mm-hmm. And so there's, I mean, there, this is, uh, there's a lot of science in this area, but there's a lot of unanswered questions about the, about the science in this area. There are some, there is some really sound stuff though. And, mm-hmm. uh, today we're going to talk about one really sound piece of, uh, of advice for recovery. And one that has been, I think, in my opinion, overhyped. And so the really sound one we're going to talk about is sleep. Yeah. The overhyped one is cold water immersion. Mm, okay. So let's start talking about sleep. And so let me ask you number one question. Uh, on Saturday night, how did you sleep? Oh, I would say I slept reasonably well, but not great. I certainly woke up early. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I was in my trailer. So uh but yeah it was um and i you know i know after a race like that i typically don't sleep well because one i don't eat well after a race and so i've got that whole nutrition uh aspect going on but then it, you know just the, the exertion of being out uh exercising for a long period of time i i, I never expect to sleep well after a race like that yeah, i never sleep well after a race i usually don't sleep well before the race Mm -hmm. i usually don't sleep well after the race and the interesting thing is is that as far as all of the pieces of recovery sleep is a cornerstone so Mm -hmm. i put into the into the chat a little pyramid i'm going to share yeah let me set that up sorry go ahead i'm going to share um where i got that from so do i have the ability to share now yeah you should 
So this is called the recovery pyramid. Okay, I see it. Can you see that okay? So here, you know, the, obviously the, the things that are at the bottom are bigger, right? They have more, more impact, more nutrition, or more, more science behind them. So we're going to talk about sleep and downtime and then cold water immersion, which I disagree with this position. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain why I disagree mm -hmm. with it. But let's talk about sleep and downtime first. So good quality sleep, quantity of sleep, good sleep routine, but not just sleep, but also mental recovery and relaxation. I think mm -hmm. this is a really interesting one that is often missed is that mental recovery and relaxation. Yeah. And remember, this is not just from recovery from a race. This is every day. This is yeah. recovering from session after session after session and we've talked at length about one of the one of the big issues with triathlon is trying to train for three sports mm -hmm. is where do we fit in the recovery yeah and, um, and i guess one other thing before we really deep dive deep into this is there's re once again there's recovery and there's adaptation and when we exercise we're trying to stimulate an adaptation right and if we don't allow time for our bodies basically to rebuild and adapt, we are just going to keep digging ourselves into a deeper and deeper hole. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, the research is pretty good on this is that sleep is number one and sleep yeah. is king. And um, but when we talk to high level athletes, um, it's often uh something that is not done well. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the early data on this, um, you know, the, the, the company whoop that, that yep. does the, 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 you know, the, the wristband thing and they measured sleep. And when they looked at it in major league baseball and in the NBA, um, they were seeing that these guys are getting like during the season they were, I think they were averaging just over six hours a night mm. uh, of sleep. And these are professional athletes. And, once they became aware of how much they were sleeping and then they did things to mitigate it, batting averages went up, free throw percentage shooting went up. And there's, a, there is so, there are so many studies that show by increasing sleep, you increase performance yeah. and you increase it by increasing recovery, whether that is that central, you know, in the central nervous system or if it's peripheral where it's the muscles, either way, you're going to enhance it. Now, John, is this what you're seeing as well? Oh, very much so. And you know, I really like that you talked about the mental uh, recovery as well. And that's so important uh, to have a, a good sleep pattern uh, for that. And we all know that. I mean, we all, you know, if you, you miss a couple of nights of, of good sleep, you know, a little on edge uh, and, and it's, it's hard to avoid. Uh, and your mental clarity is just not uh, as good. I like to actually one of the review articles, one of our grad students sent us, Bernice, uh, where they talked about this um, model for improving sleep. Yes. And uh, it was obtained adequate total sleep duration, which obviously makes sense. And that's what you're speaking to there. Maintain healthy sleep habits, which is good because now not only can you, you work on one night of, of sleep, but now you got to string these nights, consecutive nights together. And then this one is probably really good for uh, triathletes specifically is minimizing impact of travel or yeah. sleep disruptions or events that will cause sleep disruptions. So uh, I, I, I like this model and I'm guilty of not spending enough time to make sure I've got good sleep habits right from the beginning. Yeah. So in, in athletic training right now, we're calling the sleep hygiene. Mm hmm. And, um, you know, one of the, one of the things that I teach my students is, is if you have an athlete that is injured and wants to recover faster, which they all do, mm -hmm. right. Anyone that's injured wants to get better faster. Yeah. One of the things we want to find out is tell us about your sleep, right? Cause, and I can tell you this, I've talked to some athletes at UNLV, um, that are sleeping four hours a night, mm -hmm. right. And they're injured. It's like, well, what can I do to get better faster? Well, number one, let's see if we can increase your sleep. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, however that is, if you can get from four hours to five hours, you're going to improve. Right. Right. You know, we, we've talked about injuries stuff before, but you know, that's one of my big things is, is if you're rehabbing an injury, 
you have to prioritize sleep because that's when we repair. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, one of the, one of the hormones that gets released in sleep is human growth hormone. Mm -hmm. Um, For those of you that don't know, that's a banned substance. If you take it exogenously or you take it via an injection or pill, but we make it, we make it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it is released in a, in little bursts, like little puffs, but those puffs happen when you basically when you're asleep and the biggest puff happens within the first hour of falling asleep, mm. but you can actually miss it if you don't fall asleep at the same time all the time. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So if you, for example, if you go to bed every night at 10 o'clock at 11, you get that little puff, the biggest mm-hmm. puff of uh, of human growth hormone. So, but if on Friday night and Saturday night, let's say you stay up till midnight because right. it's the weekend, you actually will miss that the biggest piece. Mm. So some of the research was actually show, postulating that an athlete could actually lose all the gains they made in the week by staying up late two nights in a row. Oh, that's yeah. Interesting. Well, it's that's a circadian or circadian, circadian. Rhythm, depending on if you're in Canada or in the U S yeah. Uh, yeah, it's that, that natural rhythm that you don't want to disrupt. Yep. And, and, and it's really critical. Like the sleep going to sleep time is actually more important than even the wake time mm-hmm. because when you're in deep sleep, which, ha- which happens in the first half of the night, that's when more of this human growth hormone and more of the repair happens. The second half of the sleep is more when you're, you have the REM sleep mm-hmm. and the REM sleep is real, but it's still very important. It's more vital for memory and making memory and um, more of the cognitive uh, restoration which is, don't get me wrong, is still very, very important. But if you're talking purely about recovery from uh, like the breakdown of muscle fiber, uh, it, probably the first half is more important. Well, but, but this, is, uh, this is why in the academic world, there's a lot of neat research on this is because this is why you don't want to cram the night before a test. Exactly. Instead, you want to get a good night's sleep so you have the best test performance uh, that you can have. So it actually, you know, bleeds over into this, like we're talking about mental acuity and this, this yep. sharpness that you can have uh, with good sleep. Yeah. And, and, and it rolls over from day to day. Like that's the important thing to understand too, is um, if you don't sleep well for several days in a row, it just gets worse and worse and worse. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. And if the pattern gets messed up, the more it gets messed up, the harder it is to get back into rhythm. Mm-hmm. And I, and I think that that's, that's really a critical thing um, to, to understand. Now, most triathletes I know, they, go, they do a decent job of going to bed right? because they're tired from the training, right? Mm-hmm. But one of the things that I've noticed in the people that I, you know, I've consulted with is, is they will wake up early yes. to train. Yeah, that's right. And I think that that's actually a recipe for disaster in the long term, mm-hmm. right? And I get it. Like, Hey, coach has me a, a six hour bike ride and I, you know, I've got a family. I want to get going by four in the morning. So at 10 I'm done and I can have my family time. Mm-hmm. My, my, my question would be, would a four hour bike ride have been just as good because you had had more rest um, and start at six instead. Yeah. And there's no good research on this yet. Mm-hmm. And so it would be a really hard research study to actually, to actually do, but there's anecdotal evidence. And this is coming out of a lot of the stuff from, from companies like whoop and aura mm-hmm. that are, are, are measuring this, this stuff. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what your take is, John. I know that you are notorious uh, in the summer for waking up early and getting, <laughs> uh, well, but I don't wake up with an alarm. Uh, right. And that's the critical. majority of the time. Yeah, Only that's when I know I need to get up even earlier than I normally do. Yeah. Well, I make sure to have some alarm. And those those are the worst. You know, I, for me, I, I don't like having that disruption of sleep at that point. Uh, but yeah, yeah no, like you're, you're in a nice deep sleep and at five o'clock in the morning that goes off when you would have yeah. naturally woke up at 520. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 crazy stuff because that actually can mess your whole day. It, it, it can. That's right. And so but I, I do. I, I, you know, especially in the summer, I do like getting to bed early so I can get up early, but it's a natural rhythm that I, that I get into uh, to be able to do that. 
Yeah. So the other one that I think is interesting is people like, cause I've had people say, well, oh, it's, I, I'm still hitting my power numbers. Mm-hmm. Like I, it didn't affect me, Yeah. but they don't recognize that you can still perform with very little sleep because mm-hmm. we have hormones that are going to kind of kick in, you yeah. know, in particular cortisol, right? This, our stress hormone can get us a long way. Mm-hmm. Right. But eventually you lose that ability too, or your cortisol level becomes too high all of the time. And then that actually trickles down and makes it more difficult to sleep mm-hmm. because your body just gets used to producing higher levels of cortisol, which is stimulatory. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a, it's a common thing that happens in endurance athletes too. They're like, well, I just wake up at three 34 in the morning. I can't get back to sleep. Yeah. Well, that's a sign that you actually have elevated cortisol levels. Mm-hmm. And it's because you've been basically pushing your body to that, to, to, to that end. And it's going to take a long time actually to reset that. Mm. Unfortunately, That's a, that's a yeah. great explanation. Yeah. Um, but so, if, but if you're going to miss one night of sleep, you know, race night, you're still able to, to have a good performance, but you can't string those, those uh, sleepless nights together and, and still do well. Yeah, no, it's true. Like the evidence is pretty good on that. Like you can get away with one night. Mm-hmm. And so then for, for many people, it's critical, like two nights before a race that they really prioritize sleep that night, especially like, you know, we go to a race that starts at six in the morning and let's say transition area opens at four fifteen or whatever you got to eat, you know, so you might wake up at three forty five, mm-hmm. right? Okay. So we understand that one night you can get away with it. So yeah. then two nights before, like, that's when you got to say, Hey, you know, I need to be, mm-hmm. hit the hay early and I need to, I need to sleep until I naturally wake up. Mm-hmm. And maybe even force yourself. Like sometimes I'll wake up, you know, four o'clock in the morning or whatever. I'll be laying there. I'm like, you know, it's better if I just lay here. Yeah. Be calm. Rest my system, right? Rest my neurologic system. Keep my eyes closed and still be resting. Maybe not sleeping, but still resting mm-hmm. and prioritize that. Yeah. You know, it's going to, you know, it's, you know, it's coming ahead. Right. Well, and I do have to admit that one of the downsides of sleeping next to transition in my trailer was the noise of the setup of transition. They started early in the morning and even on race morning, uh, yeah, I got woke up, woke up by the, the announcer. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So, yeah. So you need to get a camp spot next time, maybe a little further away. That's right. Put up a little bit more soundproofing. So <laughs> yeah. Can you insulate your trailer a little bit better or get some yeah. headphones well, but or the, plugs. And so you were talking about not sleeping well after a race. So now you've got two consecutive nights yep. of poor sleep. Yep. And you just did a big exercise session too. Uh, that's got to, you know, what, what's your reading tell you on how that recovery that, delays? It, 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 it delays your recovery significantly. Yeah. So, you know, I've been complaining all week that my legs have been sore. Well, I didn't actually sleep well for three nights in a row. I didn't sleep night the, the, well the, the night before the race. The night after the race didn't sleep well. And my legs were so sore the following night, I still didn't sleep very well. Mm. And so I, I know it, it delayed me, right? But what do you do? Like, I went to bed at my normal time and just laid there, maybe fell asleep and then woke up and couldn't get back to sleep. And, you know, when your legs are sore and you're laying in bed, man, it's hard sometimes to, you know, in, in retrospect, maybe I should have taken some Tylenol or something. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, that first night. And I think that for my next race, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to just have some Tylenol, uh, just to maybe decrease the pain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, but honestly, John, I think it was that downhill run because I don't normally get pain like that. Yeah. Now, normally I'm just amped up. And I think my, it might also be just like the amount of caffeine I ingest mm-hmm. is significantly higher on a, on a race day. Right. You know, normally I have one cup of caffeinated coffee a day mm-hmm. and you know, I probably, I don't know. I tried to actually mitigate it a little bit this time, but I still probably had maybe three or four cups worth Okay. during the race. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, triple you know what you normally would have and you know you respond well to caffeine so that that's gonna that's gonna impact everything as well yeah and i'm a slow metabolizer of caffeine so mm-hmm. 
it probably has more of a more of an, uh, a negative effect. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. And the last time I did an Ironman, um, I think I had a thousand milligrams of caffeine during the. Wow. <laughs> during, during the day. <laughs> well, you think about it, ten hours. That's only like that's right. Milligrams an hour. That's not much, really. No, that's right. That's right. It and sounds you, like a lot, but you're right. You spread it I, out I, over that. I didn't sleep for like three days. You know. Just, uh, <laughs> Uh, so we'll see on the, on the one coming up, but yeah. So, so, you know, what, when we talk about sleep hygiene, we do what we're not the athletes that I, I work with and the students that I teach, we give them some basics that mm-hmm. they can, that they can work with. And John, one of the things that research kind of shows is it's really hard for people to make change, oh, right. Yeah. To actually make an actual life change mm-hmm. is, you know, some of the research says, well, you know, you need 60 days of yeah. consistency to actually make something like a, uh, a normal uh, part of your life. So one of the strategies is um, to just add 15 minutes, um, 15 minutes a night. And uh, so if you add 15 minutes a night, that ends up to like an hour and 45 minutes a week. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually is. Mm-hmm. And so then you add that. And if you, and once that becomes more routine, then you try and add another 15 minutes. Okay. It doesn't, the research shows it's really difficult for people like to add an hour. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and just because their life routine is, um, you know, it gets in the way. Sure. Right. You know? So that's, that's one. And then, you know, some, some of the people are like, well, I just can't fall asleep. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I go to, you know, yeah, I'm trying to go to bed earlier but I just can't fall asleep. And then, so there's some strategies, some very simple strategies in the literature um, that are pretty, pretty, pretty much back. There's, there's some good evidence to support them. Number one uh, strategy is to get yourself blue light early in the morning. Get yourself, say that again? Get yourself some blue light early in the morning. Oh, okay. All right. So number one strategy for sleeping better at night is to get, you know, get outside early. Mm-hmm. And walk, you know, just go for a walk, 20 minutes. And they actually say to look at the sky. Mm-hmm. Don't look at the sun. Mm-hmm. Just look at the blue sky. Right. And that starts the process of building up um, something's called sleep pressure okay. in, in your brain. And you can actually start that process early. Mm-hmm. And then you add that to at in the evening, avoiding blue light. And we're all inundated by blue light. We're like, we're, we're inundated by it right now. Although I have that's a blue light blocker on my uh, on my screen right now. Oh, that's good. Um, but you know, all of the devices, right? The television yeah. now, the the switch to LED lights. Mm-hmm. You know, they 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 might be saving the planet, yeah. one one light bulb at a time. Yeah. But they emit a lot of blue light. That's right. And fluorescent lights are horrible mm-hmm. uh, for blue light. So, you know, I've got, uh, I wear blue light blocking glasses around, usually not to like about 930. I should probably put them on earlier, but mm-hmm. they look horrible. And, you know, yeah, right. It's Cosmo, important. you know, Co- Co- Cosmo judges me. So, yeah. um, so you want to, you want to block the blue light at night because that'll actually stimulate, uh, the release of kind of like your sleep hormones. Yeah. You want to have it early in the morning to upregulate your awake hormones. Mm-hmm. So those are like just some very, very simple things that along with, along with consistent timing, it will get a lot of people uh, to the point where they can actually increase their sleep. No, that's great. And you're right. You know, it's the, the blue light, obviously from our phone or iPad or computers or TVs. And uh, I think a lot of us have gotten in the habit of having those next to our bed. You know, I am guilty of watching a movie uh you know on the phone and and then trying to go to bed and boy that's just terrible that uh it, but and so now that's a habit to break and uh that's not that's not, like you said it's not easy to make that change but it is easy to put on like the filters right mm-hmm. so on your phone you have um a filter that uh it's called night shift on iphone right. i don't know what's called on android yeah. so at least you can do that that's, right. um, that's one step uh, on the computer, there's a program called uh, F.Lux, mm-hmm. a free download. That's what I have on this computer right now. That uh, it actually knows where you are in the world and where the sun is and stuff. And so when the sun naturally mm-hmm. goes down, it starts to uh, remove the blue light. Oh, neat. Yeah. And so there are, there are things that you can do that are pretty low-hanging fruit. 
Mm-hmm. Um, the other really low hanging fruit is uh, to avoid caffeine after a certain amount of time, right? Mm-hmm. So, and it depends. We've talked about caffeine sensitivity uh, on the podcast before, but most of the population are slow metabolizers of caffeine. And so the research in there says you need to avoid caffeine after either noon or one o'clock. Right. No, that's great. And, and uh, I'll add in one more here. And actually, uh, Bob beat me to it on the naps. Uh, he put in, what about naps in the afternoon? Yeah. Oh, so good. the research is interesting on this one, though, mm-hmm. because too long of naps are not good. Right. Right. So um, have you come across any of the research on the caffeine nap? No, no, I haven't. So this is something that uh, some athletes are doing where they actually will ingest caffeine right before they have their nap. Mm. And then it'll wake them up. Okay. Uh, you know, they won't allow them to sleep for, for too long. Yeah. Right. Because if you actually end up getting into like deep sleep, mm-hmm. um, it could actually decrease your sleep pressure for later in the night. Mm. Yeah. So the research is kind of showing that you need 15 to 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. is better than 40 to 60 minutes. Yeah, and that's what I heard as well, is that you need to be more alert. You got to allow for that alertness after the lap nap. Yeah. And so you avoid that grogginess that, that would carry over to influence the, the sleep later on. You know, and, and I'll add even, even in that nap time, even if you don't fall asleep, like go unconscious, it's still very, very valuable. Mm-hmm um for basically you know for recovery so in that pyramid one of the one of the things is what was mental relaxation Mm -hmm. right so actually having points of the day where you can turn off yeah so you know for me you know i'm gonna even when i'm at work like after lunch sometimes i'll just turn the lights off sit in my chair Mm -hmm. just think you know just kind of almost meditate for like 10 minutes yeah and it definitely helps me be more productive in the afternoon, but also helps me, I think, sleep a little better later. Mm-hmm. But that's, yeah, that's good. Boy, that's, yeah. that's really anecdotal. It's so important, you know, just to have that, that sleep routine. And like this model shows in this review paper is maintaining healthy sleep habits. You've got to do this over a long period of time. And then it does become a habit and it becomes part of your routine. Yep. Whereas I think uh, some of us have these um, poor sleep habits and therefore it's actually harder to get into a good sleep routine. You've got to break that habit uh, first and foremost. So but like I said, break it sl- but slowly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that 15 minute a night uh, idea. That's good. So um, John, like you, you and I obviously both, uh, you know, we have a lot of students and when I talk to my students about this, their biggest problem is this, and, and, and I don't think it's just students, it's the social media side, mm-hmm. right? They're, they are, and, and, you know, I've fallen into a little bit of this trap sometimes too. You get reading and you, oh yeah, and then you scroll to the next one and the next one. And next thing you know, it's like, you know, you're an hour past your bedtime or longer. Yeah. So I have students that are telling me like, you know, they were, I said, just be honest, I would just really want to know, you know, they're like four hours a night, mm-hmm. you know, like from 10 until two in the morning. Yeah. On, on social media. And, and, I, and I don't think it's just my students. I think there's a lot of people in the population, mm-hmm. but that's how they're getting and feeling connection, especially during COVID. Yeah. They, were, they were utilizing that for, for social connection. And it was very negative. The other one is, I'm going to give you a, a heads up on this one. Um, if you get to the point in Netflix, when it says, are you still watching? <laughs> <laughs> it's time to go to bed. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that. Actually, I don't get to that because it will take me maybe three nights, maybe four nights to watch a movie because I, I never make it longer than, you know, 15 to 30 minutes. So I guess yeah. that's a good sign. But yeah, yeah. So it's more of the, if you're binge watching a series, right? Like it's yeah. like show after show. I think it's after three or four episodes that says, are you still there? Are you still watching? <laughs> if, you get, if, you, if, if you get to that point and it's at night, the answer is no and you yeah. go to bed. That's great. No, I've not reached that. So, <laughs> but the social media for sure. And I'll, I'll actually add in, uh, I, I guess I would call it work media at that point. Yep. I turn email off. Sorry. I know we're colleagues, but I turn no, email off after a certain time because 
and I, I try to take Sundays with no email yep. uh, because it, 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 it can, you know, all it takes is that one email that all of a sudden starts the, the brain working. And if you do that at night, now you're thinking about something and all of a sudden it just, it's John, keeping John, you up. So I'm, I, I'll take it a step further. I don't look at my work email on Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, unless we're doing an event like on Saturday, yeah. like for, for work or something sure. like that. But because you're right, it literally just takes one email from one mm -hmm. student or one like complaining about something or not happy about something. Yep. You know, the weekend emails are never the nice ones, right? <laughs> and they're like, hey, you know, class was great this week. You did such a good job teaching and I'm really happy. No, you never yeah. get those. It's, it's yeah. always negative, but it can always wait till Monday. That's right. You know, and I think that's, that's important. And we're lucky that we have jobs that, that are like that, but I know a lot of people work on the weekends and they, mm -hmm. they, they, they have that, uh, that, that commitment that they have to have. But, you know, I think you're right. Like when it's, you know, you have to set a time, I think like maybe it's five thirty, six o'clock, whatever that the work email goes away. And now you can have your fun email. Yeah. Well, and, and to that point, I, I, I also, because it is, you know, one hand receiving email, but I try to be aware not to send those emails either. Yeah. On a Friday that, you know, it's going to cause someone else some, uh, some the stress over the weekend. Yeah. So, uh, so the, the, yeah, it, it does work both ways. But. So that's the old mantra in, in the business world, right? You always fire people on Friday afternoon. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're not in the business world. <laughs> that's why we're not in the business world. <laughs> For academics. So it's a little it's less, a little less cutthroat. It's still cutthroat, but not, not like that. So. <laughs> not like that. Mm. So the, the other piece I wanted to add into here is, you know, in that pyramid, it actually said like compression and fads. Mm. And so some of the fads, um, I think work because they allow you to relax. Mm -hmm. Right. So for example, we both have utilized compression garments and yep. compression uh, like Normatex and recovery systems, recovery boots. I actually think one of the benefits of those is it actually allows you to relax. Yeah, that's right. You so know, it forces you, you, what you mean is it forces you to stop yeah. doing what you're doing. You're not going to go for a run with recovery boots on because or you're not, or you're not going to go even like cook dinner or empty the trash yeah. or go to the that's garage right. and do this. And, Oh, I forgot yeah. about this and run upstairs. Mm -hmm. You literally yeah. are just sitting still. Um, yeah. It's very typical. Like I actually have a really difficult time having a nap. Mm -hmm. I keep going unconscious. But if I'm in the recovery boots on a Sunday afternoon, yeah, I can I can usually fall asleep. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So I think that a lot of the recovery things come back to: Can you actually get the person to relax? Yeah. And or can you relax? Relax well, your body. Relax your mind. I think that's true. And uh, Chris on here also says. Uh, yeah, huge fan of quick naps after a big run or a big ride, just like you talk about. Uh, but I, I think it, it's also um, this part of a belief score. You know, in some of the papers that we read uh, prior to tonight, we're talking about belief score. You know, do you we believe certain things work? And on one hand, you know, I, we could put that in a category of placebo. And on one hand, you're like, oh, well, maybe that's not you know, maybe that makes the product not as, as effective, but boy, I tell you, if you believe it works and you get a positive benefit out of it. Yeah. I'm okay. With that. That's um, well, and, and some of the thing is, is, is some of the metrics that we're using to measure if the, if some of these recovery things work, mm -hmm. are not necessarily, they may work, but they may not work the way we think they work. That that's yes. That's an excellent point. That, that is really good. Yeah. So, uh, John, oh my gosh, we went to almost an hour and we uh, only got to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> we'll tackle cold water immersion next time. Um, this was great, though. I, I think that we really uh, emphasized the, the, you know, the, the primacy of this. And for those of you that are going to join me for my, uh, the ride on Sunday, it's whenever I wake up. Yeah, there you go. Out there. Like, honestly, I, I do not like meeting people for a, for a ride on a Sunday. Yeah. And it's not that I don't like riding with people. Right. It's that I don't like that stress of, hey, we're meeting at seven because then I have to yeah. set an alarm. And yeah. honestly, setting alarm for me is actually stressful because I'm like, is it going to yeah. go? Is it going right, to right. you know? And I honestly, I don't sleep as well if, yeah, I have to, right. if I have to be somewhere early in the morning. No, that's a great point. And even, uh, you know, Laura and I, we both go through this is that if you know you have a big 
a big day ahead of you exercise why even though it's just training it can impact our sleep because you're you're thinking about well did i pack everything did, you know what time do i need to get up how do i you know it, it that in itself can uh, cause some uh, some anxiety which keeps you up i yeah. i often think of it as well at least i'm I'm prepping myself for what it's like race night, you know, and that's at least how I try to justify it. So, but, so. but, but if the justify is you didn't recover from the, yeah, that's right. you know, I, I, you know, I, you think you can, you can justify it to yourself, but I still don't think it works. No, no, I, I, I believe me. I wish I could yeah. sleep when I want to be able to sleep, you know, it's, uh, yeah. I really wish I honestly, like if I could make a magic thing, there'd be a switch. So you could just mm. turn that switch at 10, turn it on at six, sleep, mm -hmm. awake. Yeah, we're good. But that's not that's not how life works. Well, and, you know, this is going to lead us into having to talk about jet lag at some point. And yes. How... Maybe when we start traveling again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we can save that for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because even so, even the races now that we really have, you're driving to California, right? You're driving. I'm flying. Oh, you're flying. Okay. Just but to relieve one more piece of stress. What, it's an hour, right? Flight? Yeah, it's an hour, hour flight and I have somebody else bringing my bike. Yeah. So really the, the travel that we have is within one time zone. Yeah. Uh, you know, driving up to St. George is, you know, well, actually it, that's a different time it's zone. funny, right? Because that one hour difference did mess with me. It did. Yes. That, that's funny that you say that because you're right. It, it, it does actually change you know, the morning and the evening. Right? Yep. Yeah. So, you know, the, the trick with that one was, could you try and keep your brain on that same, on your yeah. normal time zone? Mm -hmm. You know, we were kind of fortunate that that race didn't start very early. No. Right. right. So that, that made it a little bit easier, but you know, the spring race will probably start at six. Yeah. So mm -hmm. speaking of the spring race, John, mm -hmm. some crazy stuff this week or yesterday with the, with the spring uh iron man in uh in saint george so yeah. you and i had both already signed up for the yep. the iron man uh saint george mm -hmm. i think you as well as i were looking at it for a qualifier i right? was that's right yeah. it still that is was, though it's yeah i know but yeah. that was that was my like my plan was that was the race for me to qualify i think hey, you hey, did the same yeah. thing now i'm like well, I guess we should tell people if you don't know that the the World Championship, the Ironman World Championship for 2021, was supposed to be in Kona mm -hmm. in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Got moved to Kona in February. Yep. And on just yesterday, they decided they were moving it to St. George in May. So it'll be the 2021 World Championship in May in St. George. And if you'd already signed up for the St. George race. Congratulations. Congratulations. You are going to be racing the world championship along with people that had already planned on being in the 2021 race. Um, so yeah, that was a huge surprise for us. And, 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 and I was really, I was thrilled. I was over the moon. Mm -hmm. uh, I know some people were not too happy with it, but for me, like we're talking about, it's literally, it's a two hour drive away. We were going anyways. Mm -hmm. We both love St. George. Yep. Um, I love the community. They they mm -hmm. are so behind oh, Iron Man. Yeah. Everywhere I went oh. in St. George, I, you know, we're at Culver's, like three people. Hey, are you racing the Iron Man? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we That's are. That's great. Or the next day, I was at Culver's again, getting more custard. Did you mm -hmm. race the Iron Man? Mm -hmm. Can't you tell by the way I, I can't walk? Of course I <laughs> race the Iron Man. But I love the fact the community is so, so behind it. But in some ways, I also was a little bit disappointed because, yes, it's still a qualifier for 2022. Mm -hmm. But I think it's going to be a lot harder to qualify now. It 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 could be, and it's going to be interesting to see how this dynamic works out. But like you, I saw the switch, and and the, my first reaction was, "Oh, that's going to be cool." Yeah. Uh, again, with this idea that we get to share this area with uh, people from around the world. Yeah, share it with the and world. Yeah, there will be you know a new experience for them. But then I did pause and I said, "Hmm," because they gave us about 10 other options to switch to another race. And then I started thinking, well, if I was going to try to qualify, just like you're saying now, maybe this is not the race to try to qualify. One, I, I wasn't sure they were going to have spots, but then I had to go back and reread the message and they did. Um, so I started looking at Alaska. I started looking at uh, Lake Placid, maybe Maryland. 
but then at the end of the day, I, I went through it and I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to stick with St. George. It's, you know, in our backyard. It gives us a chance to practice on the course. Yeah. Uh, and, and we were going to do the race anyways. We were like going to do the race anyhow. And what, you know, what difference does it make? My time yeah. is going to be the same. No matter well, what. I think, I think the dynamics of qualifying, what may be, what may happen is a number of people who are going to go in, uh, in, in May in St. George may have already qualified for the October, 2022. Right. So there may already, they may be double dipping, if you will. And so, um, so in essence, it may still be a, might, a, yeah, a, a normal be qualifying race. It's not like you're trying to qualify at a world championship. So, yeah. And in my mind as well, John, it's like, I just wanted to race the Ironman World Championship just one yeah. time. Oh, nice. I don't really care to go to Kona. I really yeah. don't. I know you've been, mm -hmm. but like for, for me, hot, windy, yeah, humid, <laughs> expensive. Yeah. Right? Instead of going to Kona, I could buy a new bike. I literally could. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right? So honestly, for me... If I end up qualifying out of there, I'll still go to Kona. But it honestly, this will this will scratch that itch for me. Like yeah. I really think that I'm good because we're gonna get some good gear. Yeah, yeah, we will. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I mean, you probably already have your campsite booked. I got my Air Airbnb booked. The campsite's gonna be a little trickier because I've already tried to get it, and they are actually saving all the spots for Ironman staff. So that's. Uh, Oh, so now I got to join the Ironman staff. So, yeah. Or, I mean, I, I think we could still get your trailer in our driveway of our Airbnb. That's right. I could go to another campsite. The Quail Creek is going to be open. There's a couple others up there uh, yeah. to be able to go. So, um, but yeah, they, they really do need that space. And I, and I get it because even for the 70.3, the volunteers were coming in and parking in the campsites there, which made a lot of sense because where else are they going to park? And so they, they do need the space for uh, for the staff to do what they need to do. And boy, I tell you, they did a great job. Uh, volunteers, oh, uh, organization, it's just amazing pulling off that a 70.3 event. Now to pull off a, a full is just going to be pretty tremendous. But uh, they did a great job. No, I, John, it, to me, the volunteers at that race went above and beyond. Yeah. Um, especially because of the conditions. Oh. Like, yeah. When the when it was really bad and I got to an aid station, they were still hey, they were God, there. Oh like I would have been like, see, yeah, I'm volunteering, I'm out of yeah, here. Right. <laughs> you know, oh, they were having a great time. They really were. And uh at no point did I get to an aid station and they didn't have what I wanted. Yep. Right. There was mm -hmm. always you know, water, ice, Gatorade, whatever I wanted was right there. Mm. Um, yeah, it was. And I, I don't know. I haven't talked to anybody. Uh, have you talked to somebody that finished late if they ran out of stuff or? Nothing. But, <laughs> but I know on the bike, I was picking up water that was ice cold. And I'm like, I actually need freezing a right now. <laughs> <laughs> so they were ready for a hot day as well from uh, from the get go. So you know, it's funny them. on the, the first aid station, it, the wind hadn't hit me yet. Yeah. I was like, okay, you know, normally the first aid station, I would grab a water, pour it down my back, drink a little, yep. throw it away. Yep. I did that. Yep. And then we hit that turn. And within, I don't know, five minutes, the wind started going. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, I'm getting cold. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to snow at one point to tell you the truth. So yeah, it was, yeah. it was really, uh, the weather was just, it, it was just a, a, a real quick change and we've seen those types of storms you know here in vegas as well where all of a sudden it just you know whips up and drops a lot of rain but over in one area and that's why flash flooding is such a big problem around here because you may not even see the storm but you may see the the after effect of it so yeah like how often does it like rain on my side of town and i'll talk to you and yeah, you're, and yeah. did you get that rain no didn't even know <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that, that, yeah, it, I was on a call last week and that's exactly what happened was someone was saying, oh, it's raining. And I'm like looking out and it's beautiful and sunny right here. So, yeah. All mm. right, John. Well, hey, we're going to hit cold water immersion next, next time. We got a lot of topics uh, ahead of us. Uh, this is, this is good. You know, it's the, uh, it's a, the big part of the year for triathlon. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, we got Chattanooga mm -hmm. this weekend. What else is this weekend? 
the Odyssey Swim Run. We've sent oh, yeah. a couple athletes up there. So T and Steph are doing that. We've yeah. got uh, we've got a few people at Chattanooga. Paul, Ken, uh, and uh, is it Mike? Yeah, Mike is there. Um, and there's one more race that uh, I'm drawing a blink on that uh, people are at. Uh, at Chad's. Yeah. We're in the middle of it right now, you know, if, yeah. if you think about it, because all these races were postponed and moved and it's like every weekend there's multiple, uh, multiple races. Oh, and uh, Malibu is this weekend. Oh, the, and Cozumel uh, 70.3. Do you know anyone at Malibu? This no, weekend? I don't. So Malibu is, uh, if anyone wants to see something really cool, uh, that's the uh, final for the, um, oh, what's the sprint one called? The... Uh, Oh, Super League. Super League, oh, Super Super League? League final yeah. is in Malibu. Oh, cool. So it was three races in Europe, and now the final is okay. in Malibu this weekend. And that's they, they've been putting their races on YouTube. Oh, um, cool. You can oh, watch right. that. So that series, I've actually watched all three. Actually, the last one, they only had highlights on YouTube. But yeah. it's super exciting racing. And, you know, we we're, were talking about the club, like doing something fun. Maybe we do something like that where we actually yeah. do, uh, you know, three swim bike runs back to back to back to back. I like that. And I like, I like the idea of trying to do some type of mixed relay uh, yeah. thing too. We've got to do a test event like that. And uh, Bob is reminding us BBSC Las Vegas try next weekend. So yeah, um, I'm on the fence if I'm going to race. Oh, I signed up because it's senior games too. So yeah, well, I'm not a senior yet. I know I am. <laughs> next, year, next year I am. This will be the, the last year of not being in the senior games. Um <laughs> Yeah, I can't decide, uh, you know, because the Ironman in California is four weeks from this weekend, right, right. whether it be my best interest or not to 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 do it. If I do, I'll do a sprint race. Is that what you're signed up for? Yep. Yep. Well, then I'm going to do it. Just to race. Oh, you. there you go. Let's do it. <laughs> fun. All right, John. Well, have a great weekend. Yeah, you too. We'll talk okay. soon. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Bye.